Very easy.
give me the bottle? Yeah. coming here and when y'all travel through you can stop by here and get a little gift. Now one more thing before we get too far along. These people who put this meal together this morning, there's a lot of work involved in that. As y'all know, the ones who hosted this thing. And uh, let's give these people a hand for cooking this thing and doing such a fine job. We do appreciate it. nice the airport is, everything's so beautiful put together, you know. And, and it's a whole lot of work. We know what kind of work goes into these flying. Uh, how many people we got here today for the first time? This is the first time they've been to a breakfast club. Y'all raise your hand now. No cheating. No cheating. All right, I want to welcome y'all to the South Carolina Breakfast Club. You're now a lifetime member. You only have to come one time and there's no dues, there's no bylaws, and this is why we got such a large group of nice people, and we want you to come back again and bring somebody else with you. This thing started in 1938, it quit about two years during World War II, and then it started right back up again, and it goes on, and we have this kind of fellowship every two weeks. We go somewhere and have breakfast, and uh, there is not another flying organization in the country breakfast club like this. We were supposed to be in North Carolina yesterday to show them how to do it, but we couldn't get there. 
We had people out from seven states. I don't know what kind of juices I'm going to get, but anyway. <laughs> they, they, they do not have, they cannot get membership like we got. Most of the time they wind up with five planes and five people. And you see what we got here today, and sometimes it just overruns the whole show. So we want y'all to come back. Let's get these people a hand. Hall of Fame. Uh, it's been signed. Another thing for you new members, if y'all come enough and fly enough, you're going to get a chance to sign this thing. Whoever makes the worst landing gets lost. Some kind of excuse, we'll give it to them. We get to sign this, this ball. They get to sign this ball. This one here that I've been run and run and run and run and run. And uh, we're going to put this one up into the Hall of Fame. And we're going to pick up a new one. Bill got us a new one here today. And we're going to run it. But uh, so we're going to retire this ball today. Before we get into that, uh, they, uh, next uh, one meeting we got coming up, I want y'all, before I forget about it, to get into these meetings. It's going to be September the 6th. We're going to go to Oswald's. Uh, that's going to be the highest moving field. And that's down there around by the nudist car. But uh, we're going to be there at Oswald's. And uh, we're going to patronize the nudist car while we're there. You can. You can do that. <laughs> they got five, they got a new slide down there, got five going down at a time. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be down there in the Navy. We thought that the University of South Carolina was going to pay for it, but as it is, the Navy is going to pay for our meal. Now, somebody said Mr. Johnson up in Newbury, he's a mayor, Mr. P.D. Johnson up in Newbury, he invited all of his friends, said, we want you all to go to Oswald. He said, I'm paying for it. Well, come to find out, he knew that the name was going to be paying for it. So, we're going to have a big time now. This is the next meeting at the House Movers Field. You're going to have room to put all these planes in. Yeah. Y'all been running the Put them in the lake. Well, I'm telling you, we're going to have a lot of stuff down there. And, uh, and the Navy, uh, they got, uh, they had two days work. And, uh, six hours each day, and they had to move another building about 80 feet. And uh, it was $80,000, uh, but it was a low percentage of profit because the insurance cost so much. You know, the insurance on that, on that house move was just tremendous. It takes quite all the profit out of it, I think. About 2%, I believe. They're around 6, 630. That's on a return from the nudist cop. But now, listen, we're going to be at Twin Lakes, and y'all get your cameras for the, the new cameras for Christmas. We're going to be down there probably around May. I haven't talked to Neil and Bob. But anyway, they're going to pick us out a date. And they spent so much money at the nudist colony this year. We're going to get these big balloons, them weather balloons, and we're going to tie them in the trees. Well, when y'all leave, just follow the balloons. You can't miss. <laughs> and, uh, and bring good cameras. Bring good cameras. But they got new slides, and, uh, and, and it is really something to go over about 50 feet because it's only, you know, like a half mile from the airport. We just make left turns out. And don't climb too much, see? And now that they got so used to us, they go to waving at us. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> And when we leave, we go on about 100 planes, like the last time. <coughs> they just take off and just go right all over, like a single file, only make you turn out, see? And they get in and out. They used to get your guns. They don't do that no more. We go to waving. <laughs> you know, so. Y'all, come on down. OK, uh, let's see. Uh, what else we got going down now? Uh, Bill Hawkins, we got, uh, what you got coming up? He's going to a meeting today, too. He's got to be there by 12. That's about 50 miles per road, so I know he'll make that. First off, uh, I'd like to show this uh, to the Breakfast Club, uh, the video camera guy back here. Took this picture out of my airplane. Sent it off the Kodak, and this is what he got back. That's one of the prettiest airplane pictures I've seen in a long time. Real sharp. Good work, Jerry. That's the man with the camera going on. Uh, while the Bob talks about Jerry and his efforts, he's going to videotape the breakfast club. And hopefully we can come up with a composite of several breakfast clubs, the highlights of each one, and come here, here. make a Shut documentary up. type tape of the breakfast club. And that's the reason Jerry is doing this film. He will be attending several breakfast clubs. What was
we've got to do is try to get the rest of the people in the United States to get all upset because they think they had something. You know, some of them out in St. Louis thought they had something, and come to find out they didn't have no breakfast. I mean, they didn't have no meeting. They had meetings like two months apart, and then nobody show up. So what they want to do, they want to try to figure out a way in the rest of the United States. California doesn't have this. Uh, nobody has uh, an outfit like this South Carolina. I don't know what it's all about, but they cannot get any kind of membership or nowhere near. Like nine airplanes is, is a tremendous big show. But like what we have going on, this is a normal run for us. And they can't, we're going to try to show the rest of the country how to get a breakfast club like this going. So if we go to, if we go to Florida, they love to have a meeting down there. We'll teach Florida how to do it. We'll say, why are y'all eating that? And we'll stop by and eat with them, you know, and then maybe uh, Pennsylvania or Kentucky and the rest of them. But they just don't know how to do it. And that's what Bill and Ann and everybody involved is. It's just a lot of work. And we're going to get the same kind of show like this. Other states want to have the same thing as us. But I don't believe they're going to have the kind of people South Carolina got because this is a different part of the state. I mean, United States, you know, South Carolina is South Carolina. I mean, you can't make Boston and Massachusetts South Carolina. You don't want to know that. I think it's why they're all streamlined down here. You know what I'm talking about? But anyway, we're going to try. And Bill and working hard on that. So a lot goes into putting this thing together. What you got? You going to say something about next week? Yeah, Oswald. All right. September's coming on us here pretty quick, and hopefully some good, clear flying weather's going to come back with us. Uh, the weekend after Oswald's uh, flying, uh, we are putting on this uh, special meeting at Jekyll Island, Holiday Inn. And uh, they ask you to please call them direct and tell them you're coming with the breakfast club because they're giving you a... Uh, special rate for the breakfast club for $51 for a double occupancy room and the regular rate is $78. This is uh, good beach weather still and uh, but I hope there's good flying weather also. The number down there is 912-635-3311 and if you'll call in directly for a, a room on either the 11th or the 12th uh, we'd be glad to join in with you down there for a uh, nice weekend at Jekyll Island. Would it be a notice in the Palmetto Aviation about that? If, if we can get it in there, I think we've already covered it with the editor, and, and if he's, uh, I'm not sure he will have it in there, but it has been covered with him. And, uh, but if anybody wants any information, if you give us a call down at the Camden Airport, we'll be glad to uh, fill you in on it. That's about all I got right now. Coming up for uh, the first weekend of October, which isn't too far off now, we start making preparations for the fall fly-in of Chapter 3, Classics and Antiques. And uh, on the Sunday of that fly-in, the Breakfast Club will be in Camden, and uh, we hope to see you all there. Weather permitting, we expect another record crowd as it has been for the last two or three years. And uh, very interesting aircraft are supposed to be involved this year. I'm sure we're going to see the Curtis Dolphin back on the field again after many years of absence. And uh, hopefully the uh, uh, Curtis Jenny from up in Virginia will be there who was grand champion at Oscar. Uh, he is a chapter member, and hopefully he will have that Curtis Jenny in Camden with the OX-5 engine on it. Uh, in Camden, we the second, third, and fourth. If anybody would like a flyer for your airport uh, bulletin board, I appreciate you picking one up and taking it back home with you and putting it on the bulletin board. We try to get these out to the aviation part of our community and not so much as the general public. We cannot handle the general public crowd on our airport. Uh, we just don't have enough standing room outside the fence. And uh, we just can't have a whole lot of general public stirring about the moving aircraft. That's a, that's a big liability there, so we try to keep it to uh, aviation type people. And that's what we're catering to. Thanks. Uh, another thing now, if y'all gonna get them rooms at the Holiday Inn, y'all better start booking them up because you know the people from out of state book them things heavy. And uh, if y'all ain't never been there and seen them old movies, they start those movies at Friday night and Saturday night after the banquet. 
We're going to have a real nice banquet down there. And uh, we're going to have them big buses this year, Bill? Four vans. What about airplanes? They're going to eat cook cow. Uh, they're going to have a meeting up there, but they're not going to eat cook cow. So anytime they have a eating and cooking can on, you got to be sure to go in there because they really do a terrific job on that food business. Okay, I understand we're going to have two steaks out there. Uh-oh, two steaks. <laughs> what time is it? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock that night or next morning? Saturday morning. Oh, next Saturday morning. Where is that? Owensville. That's Owensville. Just go ahead on in. Just taxi on up there, and they'll park you. There'll be plenty of people that park planes. So. It, it's known as Columbia Downtown. Oh, let's see. Downtown. Columbia Owens Downtown Airport. Now. Jim Hamilton Boulevard. <laughs> right, and they are getting uh, all kinds of good regulations up there at uh, Owens. Uh, they're not going to have no gas and all in the hangars. And, uh, they're going to clean up. They have inspections up there. <laughs> Sanitize that place. Sanitized airport, which I predicted four years ago. And uh, <laughs> what it is, they don't want no little airplanes right there and them people working on them and all that. So they are changing over. They get heavy all against the little airplanes, but they can't do nothing with them because they're just like ants. They're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Federal government can't do nothing about it. Uh, you need a medical? Yeah. <laughs> if I need a medical, uh, Dr. Hawkins will fix you up. And, uh, the man with the annuals, I don't know what he's in now. The twins is 15 and singles are 7 and a half. <laughs> Y'all got the papers. <laughs> but you need the medical. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, well, I got a health problem, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, our air is 50. 2,600 feet long over there. It is all a little field. We make all our landings to the west. And those of you that get there early, Please tax back down to the lower end of the field because there's going to be plenty of good parking down there up the hill. We've got the back end of the woods up there, back end of the dirt road or something. <laughs> but we're going to start feeding about 9 o'clock. We have barbecue chicken. And uh, but all of you can come on in early, come in early and try to park on the lower end. And, and we're 22 miles from the Columbia VOR on 180 degree radius. Wait a minute, is that right? No. Wait, Bob Brown? <laughs> anyway, Columbia gave you vectors for Oswald Field. They got it on the chart. It was 22 miles from the VOR, and uh, Columbia approaches got it on the map, and they put you right in there. It's 18 2 will get you there. What radio put you over that new camp? <laughs> <laughs> we got that. That's Twin Lakes. We got that coming up for you. Interstate 20 put you right over here. Columbia's got that on the radar. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to do is look for this. You're coming in from, from Columbia. Just look for two big junkyards. Line up on them two junkyards and bring you right into there. What's the coordinates on this field? We don't, uh, we don't use O'Reilly. <laughs> no they say we came out for student pilots. What the instructions gonna be? Now, I don't know. You know so they say they were for student pilots. Hey, say again, what? Oh, we got them. Coming up here, y'all gonna have to help me with. What lady we got here today come the furthest? What kind of lady we got come the furthest? What kind of lady? <laughs> Sullivan's Island. <laughs> We have one from Massachusetts. Boss? Right here. All right, we got a lady here. Massachusetts looks like they're going to take it. But what happened is, <laughs> I got uh, these, these people with these gifts. They, uh, they messing me up, and they run out of them and all this kind of stuff. But what I got... There's a silver jewelry box for the lady from the little lady, young lady from Massachusetts, and uh, I'll put it on UPS. Let me and put your name and your address right here, and we will put that thing on UPS to you. And uh, but I went over there last night, and I had a big argument with them. They said they had inventory, and I said you better give me one of them things. They said I can't, and all that junk. That's it. At the uh, mall. But we got a also got a belt. From, uh, and these dudes was out of these last night, too. This belongs to another man that's got to go on UPS. So, take it. All right, what man we got coming for us today? Huh? Coming down. How about Massachusetts? Man, Massachusetts? <laughs> no. no. Oh, look out. Look out. Anybody further than Sullivan Island? Where's California? 
Yeah. You got he just moves here, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's give the young lady and the gentleman from Sullivan's Island a hand for coming to Brother this morning. Your house. It's gonna have SEBC on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. We got some of these little pins here left. We got some of them little gold pins for you. Sport coat, if you want them. Bill's got some of them. We got some stickers. Uh, these go to the flower fund. And uh, and these are three dollars. These are ten. These are gold. Fourteen karat gold. Okay. How about the new ball now for Shiraz? We got a good date going down on. No one, no cheat. Hello, what county sir. we got for the bouncer ball? Who made, who, where's the man who the landings? Who monitored the landings? I want to explain to you. Wait a minute now, let me explain. Turn that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's, there's always two sides to every story. We thought we'd give you all a foolish uh, approach from over here like we were coming from the mountain. Oh, oh. <laughs> but to be honest with you, you lying. when we left, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, Walter and I briefed each other when we left. I said, now, when we get to Georgetown, there's a big old piece of water out there in front of us. And I said, then we need to turn around and come back. So we went for Georgetown. And you know where we ended up? Well, he kept pushing me over, pushing me over. We ended up at Wadesboro. <laughs> now, we weren't lost. We were temporarily disoriented. <laughs> uh -oh. And we're here, aren't we? So I we think both of them need to say oh. it. I do, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think yeah. you know, Yeah, come on. I think both of them. One of them. Let's get both of them. Well, wait a minute. Walter doesn't deserve this. They do. He went along with they they do. Do. Whoa, whoa. His navigator requires this thing because he's an army helicopter pilot. Where do they fly? We were too high. With a Loran. Oh, it's too high. Still the pilot's supposed to have Loran. Let me tell you this. No, the Omega and the Me and this boy right here just flew to Oshkosh and back with one mile visibility and didn't get lost at all. Uh-uh. No, we don't want to hear that because I know about that. I don't want to hear that. That's out. That's out. That's out. We don't matter. Our major choice. We came to Georgetown this morning. We made it. The only mistake I'm guilty of is following this man. This <laughs> All right, let's get a full side. What y'all think? Three uh, All three of them. All three of them. All right, y'all go ahead and sign this thing this morning. All right, there you go. Now big, now big, now big. I think you need to clear coat that too so it don't ever run. Right, it'll it come off. Get a little shot of shellac on it. Get them out of the bush and they want to solve the points. <laughs> I quit, I quit. They're going to all go away. We need a new ball. I think the navigator needs to sign this thing, too. Under protest. The navigator, y'all just too high. We just enjoy flying. We went to North Carolina. That's right. Did we get anything for that? We got grease on. Y'all didn't go to Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I turned before I got the way All right. Well, I knew what else we got south, going on now? What else we got going on? <laughs> Matt, what's happening in Sumter? Don't be running off. Everything quiet. I think he's going into painting business over there, I believe. He loves paint jobs. <laughs> All right. Anybody got anything else now? We miss it. Rudy, what's happening? BD, you got all your people lined up for free meals at Oswald. Courtesy of the Navy. All right, what else? Need an 0200 engine. Anybody got an 0200 engine? Fixed base operator Dillon would like to have it. Okay, Dillon, 0200 engine. You want zero time? Any kind. Any kind. Hey, Just yeah. give me a call. All right. Now, you want to talk serious now? Go ahead. <laughs> Anybody who know who Mrs. Dole is? <laughs> no, well, she's after your wing. She's going to clip them in no uncertain terms, and it's in the paper this morning. They're talking about 30 mile arson. No entry. Vote against no. the doles. <laughs> Anybody that can't figure out how to handle traffic after as long as they have has got to be in the wrong business. So this woman out of office. 
Why come they can't have military type uh, climb and descent carters, I don't know. They've got to blank out a 30 mile circle around an airport trying to protect it. And really the only thing they need is a climb and descent carter for that runway. Well, they need to teach them to put flaps down and turn the engines on. But uh, Mrs. Dole is after General Aviation's wings, including the uh, turboprops, the jets, and us, and us in particular. So vote accordingly. Yeah, Mr. You know, the mayor, man, you better just throw away the office for that kind of stuff. And you know, we do vote. And these people control a lot of votes. I'm going to tell you one so, thing. If you don't vote and if you don't belong to a pack, which means people that, that kind of help the politicians that help us, meaning AOPA, EAA, and that type of organization, if you're not a member of those, you're getting a free ride right now. But when they clip all of our wings, you're, you're going to be one of them. So if you're not a member of one of these PAC organizations that contribute to the uh, right politician that, that knows what the story is, according to aviation, we're in trouble. And I think it's high time that the Breakfast Club starts spreading the word and doing something about it. You guys put your money where your mouth is if you want to keep flying. Thank you. And another thing, that's what the meeting was about in North Carolina that I missed with the seven other states. Once this thing gets together, when they get breakfast clubs with as many people as we got, then they're going to pool together, you know, and then we're going to have voting power and all this kind of stuff, you know, like the dude, the wrong man in office we just throwing. And this is going to go on all over the whole United States at one time. That's another thing that was all about. All right, I'll see y'all in two weeks at Oswald, courtesy of the David. Is that right, David? Ha, ha, ha.